Well, Professor Clements with you as we continue through Chapter 20 of the OpenStax College uh, Physics Textbook. Again, talking about circuits, resistance, and uh, just continued a little bit more about that. Not a lot to deal with. Um, but in this slide, we see two light bulbs, 25 watt light bulb on the left, 60 watt light bulb on the right. Watts are a unit of power for electricity measurements, just as they were for power measurements back in uh, the first semester. And you can observe possibly that this has a higher temperature, its color is a little whiter, a little yellower over here, but there is a, a temperature relationship and color. The light bulb has uh, resistance and there's current running through that light bulb, there's power being delivered to the light bulb. Our basic calculation for power is uh, given by the current in the device multiplied by the potential difference across the device. So this works for light bulbs. If we have a uh, known uh, current through the bulb and a known potential difference, maybe 110 volts, uh, we could calculate the power of the bulb in watts. If the material is ohmic, if it obeys Ohm's law, if the resistance is constant, for various currents, then we can make a substitution and calculate power with I squared times R. As you'll see in lab, light bulbs are not ohmic material. So you need to be uh, avoiding this uh, formula for the power in a light bulb. But you can use P equals I times V for the power in a light bulb. Um, so interesting calculations. This joule heating is sometimes uh, applied. The term is applied to this calculation. It is important in some electrical devices to make the uh, object hot. In the light bulb, the wire glows. In an incandescent light bulb, the wire glows when it's uh, heated up. Uh, toaster, um, electric oven, and so forth. Um, there's power being delivered to the heating element it becomes hot and then uh, does its purpose. The fluorescent bulbs work in a different principle and it actually turns out you get uh, uh, light more in the visible spectrum and less wasted light. These light bulbs put out a lot of infrared light that our eye cannot detect so a lot of the expense in lighting goes to waste uh, where the fluorescent light is putting out more of its energy just in the visible spectrum. They're more efficient. Um, so we're going to uh, move on. Most of this course will deal with direct current where the electrons always have the same direction of motion through the wire. In our society, uh, alternating current is very important. Uh, alternating current the voltage and the current are variable. In the United States, this would be a 60 hertz uh, variation. Uh, in Europe, 50 hertz. And um, the average uh, voltage on the uh, alternating current in the United States is like 110, 120. The peak, uh, that's the voltage. The peak voltage is much higher by square root of two. Um, but just be aware, alternating current, the potential across the wires actually changes you know, 60 times a second, um, 60 cycles, and we have a variable current and a variable voltage. If you want to compare an alternating current and a direct current circuit, you need to use the RMS voltage and current. And we're not going to bother calculating that. Uh, it's in the book. We're not going to write out the uh, formula for the shape of the sine wave and so forth. Uh, we're going to stick more of our discussion just with direct current. We will talk about alternating current and transformers in a future chapter when we learn how to adjust the voltage of an alternating circuit. And there's a historical uh, uh, aspect to this and uh, around 1900. Um, Edison Thomas Edison, the inventor, favored direct current for commercial power. And Tesla, uh, Nicholas Tesla, favored alternating current. Turns out there's some good reasons for both of these in certain applications, uh, but uh, alternating current is what is employed for our uh, power grid today. 
Um, the utility companies do worry about dual heating for very long transmission of electrical power. Um, if, you, if your long distance wires are heating up like the wires in a toaster oven, it's dangerous for the environment and you're wasting a lot of energy instead of delivering that energy to the consumer. Uh, so we'll see in a future chapter how that can uh, be avoided. Uh, again, alternating current, the average power, you cannot use the maximum current times maximum voltage uh, because that does not represent the full status of the system over time. Uh, but we won't worry about that. And transformers, uh, don't climb in here. These voltages are usually high and there's lethal current. Uh, leave it alone. Uh, a little bit of uh, electrical safety. If uh, there is a short circuit in uh, the, the wiring and you have a metal toaster, this uh, possibly this metal toaster case will be live. It'll be at 110 volts. Um, so you have to avoid that type of situation. Homes avoid that situation usually with three wire uh, wiring or one ground wires connected to the case of the appliance and if a short occurs then the uh, circuit breaker will trip down at the uh, uh, circuit breaker box or the fuse will uh, will melt and interrupt the uh, power. We're not going to get into that details but uh, it is important that you know a little bit that the electrical safety, the fuse interrupts the circuit and we no longer have current going through the, uh, the system. When you work on electrical equipment, first uh, make sure it's unplugged, make sure it's off, make sure it's off, been off for a long time. The capacitors in the equipment can store charge and be uh, lethal. Uh, make sure the fuse box or the circuit breaker box is uh, set to deactivate the circuit. A uh, little bit here of uh, you know, the problem with uh, electrical situations is uh, the electricity going through the muscles can lock the muscles in place and that current continues to go through the body. And hydroelectric generators at Hoover Dam. Uh, how do we get all this uh, uh, electrical power? There are generators of one sort and another. Nuclear power plants, coal, natural gas, wind, uh, hydroelectric and so forth. Um, so that's topic for a future chapter. So that's really the end here. The, most of the work of this chapter is in the previous sections, but it is important that you uh, are aware of electrical power can be calculated with I times V, the current in the device and the voltage across the device. Keep reading.